We're back with the Ryder Fez Show on 106.7 WJFK. Rob Bennington, Fez Wally, thanks for being with us tonight. Nighttime in Golf the City, and you're listening to Ryder Fez. This one's going out to the Fairfax Flasher. <laughs> you better put something over that nasty ass. Here's uh, Kendra. Kendra, you're on the Ron Fez Show. How you doing? Hi, guys. Hi, baby. I love your show. Yeah, it really is good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Great. Yeah. Okay, I have a theory about this guy. All right. And since I think a lot of people are really uncomfortable with seeing nudity in front of their face, I think that he gets a thrill out of this girl being really uncomfortable, out of all these girls being uncomfortable with yeah. it. And so I think it's just like a coping mechanism to cover up, like, his uncomfortableness socially that he has. Like, so yeah. he's doing it to other people to, like, cover up, like, his own problems. Or uncover them. All right, so right. Uh, he, since he kind of feels weird, he puts, he takes it. And makes them feel strange. Right, right. So that goes because back. Because he to... wants other people to feel as weird as he does. Yeah. All right. So that takes it back to the control issue we were talking about. Exactly. The whole power issue. Where if you consider that a social situation, he's controlling it and how other people are going to feel in it. I exactly. I but I wonder if the if the girl went oh or look at that little dank. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that, that would probably make him feel really inferior. But that like, that looks like a dink, only it's smaller. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what would happen to him if he didn't get the reaction he was going for? If somebody actually just stood there, didn't sh scream, didn't gasp, didn't look away, just stared right at it. Yeah, he'd probably feel really uncomfortable and, like, his whole thing would be turned around on him. Or offered to make sweet love to him right there. <laughs> I'm so impressed with you. Please come in and bed me. Now, has this, ever, has this ever happened to you, honey? No, it hasn't, no. 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 Well, have you ever flashed anybody? Uh, like, just my best friends when I'm drunk or something. All right, just girlfriends <laughs> or guys? Both. Now, most, uh, you know, I noticed, like, in the last few years, whenever girls are drinking, you're going to see the pups. Oh, yeah. And now, there's yeah. a couple of real reasons for this to happen. Number one, whenever you're on a boat. When you're on a boat, <laughs> the tops come up. <laughs> yeah. And also, a lot of times it shows. Or if there's any chance um, at all that they'll get beads. Yeah, a lot right, of Mardi Gras right. style flashing. Yeah, and that, you know, it's made is, maybe it start with the Mardi Gras. Now it'll happen at any bar. They'll hand out mm -hmm. beads and let women do it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I guess the boat situation, or if you're dressed in a bikini top for a show or something, you know, that's easy access. Right. So it just lends itself even more to the situation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> How drunk do you have to be to flash? Uh, it depends on who's around me. Because I'd like to take you out for drinks one night. I just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Is it every weekend? Um, no, not every weekend, but... And it's only friends. It's never for uh, strangers. No, uh, I don't know. Every once in a while, there'll be someone that I don't really know that's around, but that doesn't happen too often. Well, is it just the top, or you ever drop out on anything else? Um, uh, sometimes both. Really? It depends who's around. Yeah. I know you're asking to get bombed. There's no way around this now. <laughs> you're literally begging. <laughs> it seems like it'd be more uncomfortable to flash in front of the friends, the people that you're going to see the next day, instead of the strangers. Oh, no, definitely not. Not for me, at least. But for people like him, I would definitely say it's the other way around. <laughs> yeah, for the Fairfax yeah. Flasher. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't yeah. have friends. <laughs> Unless yeah. he's that, he could be like one of those friends. That, uh, that one of those church-going guys. Could be, yeah. You know, he's a church-going guy. It's oh, a possibility. And he's letting out a little steam, among other things. Oh. Right. A little cream. Yeah. Uh, after work, I need to let off some cream. That's the only way I can really deal. But, you know, a lot of times you find out that those church-going guys uh, or guys that just have responsibility or a lot of pressure on them, they got to break yeah. something, you know. they got to get their freak on. Yeah, they got to oh, shake yeah. out. Those will be the guys that end up maybe like in a spanking club or something. Right. The S&M club. <laughs> right. Or go home and put on a diaper. 
<laughs> and just play uh, uh, adult baby. I love adult babies. Is now I, I would never, never want to change one. But I never thought to myself that that was a real thing. I always thought that was a way to get on TV. I don't see the sexuality of a man pretending he's a baby since babies don't have sex. I can Ooh, understand yeah. all the other S and M stuff. But why would you want to pretend you were a baby? Right. None of that has anything to do with the sex. Because if you look at any of those relationships uh, adult babies have on TV, it all goes to, like, the changing and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, lot of it's all about stuff. nurturing. Well, th they don't actually mud in their big pants, do they? I don't think they do. <laughs> I, no, I, I bet they at least wet themselves. Uh, wet, maybe. But a guy <laughs> couldn't sit there and drop mud and expect a woman to change him. No but way. But maybe it's more of just about powdering. Yeah, yeah, they they love to get changed, that's for sure. But I don't believe them. I think we're getting punked. I think it's an Ashton Kutcher thing. I don't I don't believe him for a second. Do you believe in him, uh, Kendra? No. Yeah, I don't either. Fez? I believe uh, adult babies do exist. I would love to meet one. What a crazy thing to have to say. No, I would. I'd take them to the toy store. And let's just see how far he wants to take it. They would go nuts for you. That'd right. be insane. All right, thank you very much, honey. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks. Keep on flashing. I do not believe an adult baby exists. I think you, you come up with a decent scam, and you can get on the TV shows. Well, not all the adult babies are getting on TV shows. But name me one that you've never seen on TV. The only ones you know are from TV. I'm sure there's plenty of website adult babies. Again, this is a way of getting fame. All right, I'm going to look it up as we go along. <laughs> But again, uh, you know, a lot of these like web stars, I think we're being played. You don't think there's like adult baby clubs, like organizations that cater to this fetish? The only ones I've ever seen before are on Jerry. I was about to say, we just thank God for AOL for broadband. There it is. I think you just found it too. That's the one Dubs found out back. All right, diaper pail friends. <laughs> <laughs> See. <laughs> But that doesn't mean that it's uh, real. We're still being played. I don't even know what all these things are. I wonder if there's any, like, local listings for adult baby organizations in your area online. These all can't be real. And you got to wonder if there is such a club, who's running the damn thing? Is it a, another one of the babies? Yeah, what woman would get into pretending she was a mom? Where she's running a daycare center for adult babies. Where she'll handle the powder and everything for you. All right, uh, a lot of these things are saying that you have to uh, join. So I'm not, uh, I'm not actually uh, believing them. That's going towards the adult babies college fund. <laughs> There's no adult babies college fund. <laughs> There's baby college funds. Yeah, but, I mean, an adult baby's going to be 70 oh, yeah. by the time he's ready. Oh. I think they exist. I think most of these fetishes exist. There's a lot of weird people out there, Ronnie. And you don't know what they're all into. My friends, this spy report uh, got sent into a spy report. Spy report. Mick Foley back in the WWE to ref Hell in the Cell with bad blood. Okay, because all the referees said there's no way they were getting in hell in a cell Sunday on pay-per-view of the WWE Triple H and Kevin Nash, so they had to find someone hardcore enough to climb in the cell. All right, that means I'm in. I'm going to watch this now. <laughs> I'm glad to see Mick back, though. Yeah, me too. That's the only reason. That's the only reason at all that I watched this. You know, I know they all come back, but the last time Mick left, it really seemed final to me. Yeah, I know, and but... There were some hard feelings. Yeah. And again, everybody makes up when they get the cash. And he got on to junkyard wars or whatever it was. Oh, with, yeah, he's still with, doing well. With China. <laughs> and I don't even think she's still on that show. No, I don't think she's doing anything now, China. It's hard, very hard for those women to make it away from wrestling. Because where else are you going to get 20,000 people screaming for you? It's either rock and roll or wrestling. And like we said with the Mick Foley thing, she'll be back. China, if Sable could come back, China will be back easy. Hey, is there ever any, any adult baby women? You know what? All you see in adult baby is adult baby boys. And none of them are thin. 
No, they're all pretty chubby. That's their baby fat. That's their adult baby fat. I guess you're right about that. <laughs> he just a baby. <laughs> and they're all bald like real babies. Yeah, that's the good part. So they get right into that. Right. Uh, you know who looks like adult babies would be perfect for it? Uh, Tenacious D. Both of them. <laughs> they both look soft and cuddly and that they would enjoy sitting around in a diaper. They should be an adult baby band. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out and perform in diapers sometime. Especially, is it KG? Is that the other one? Yeah, Kyle Gage. Yeah. KG really looks like he could enjoy that. He's a soft little hairy baby. Ronnie, this was in the USA Today. It was talking about Americans and what they believe is a decent excuse for missing work. And some of the excuses they're just not buying. They don't think uh, these excuses should be used. One of them, Ronnie, PMS. PMS, 67% say PMS is not a legitimate missing work excuse. Yeah, uh, I remember you talking to me about that today on the 11 o'clock show. Yeah. And I guess it would depend on the PMS because some women get really bad cramps. And I don't want a woman at work cramping up on me. I'd rather she just stay the F home. Now, see, I think uh, with that, I don't think it's a legitimate excuse either, or else it's going to just be sick days every month. Yeah, well, That's maybe... basically like getting a vacation every month. Yeah, but we got nothing to compare it to. That's not a vacation if you're actually sick. Like, if there was something with my balls, believe me, I'm staying home. And once a, once a month, we had a, some sort of ball problem. <laughs> just imagine once in a month somebody kicks you in the balls. Would you, would you go, you know what I took off last month? No, you would stay home and hold your balls. So I give them credit for that. So most Americans... That and um, people now expect women to work up to like the last day of their pregnancy. And when I start to see them ready to pop, I'm like, please stay home. I would pay you to stay home. Yeah, that starts to make me nervous. Because water's going to start breaking around here. And nobody wants to see that. Unless you give birth to an adult baby. They don't want to see it. But you would not go for the, uh, you wouldn't give them the break on the PMS. No, no. What if it's really bad? Well, I've seen, we've worked with women. You know, we remember BL. Yeah. She used to go through this all the time, and she'd come into work with a hot water bottle. Yeah, she was really, really sick from it. Under her blouse. And, you know, that, you know, she had the kind of job where she could unbutton her pants and put a hot <laughs> water bottle there. But what about people who don't? They couldn't sit there and lay down with a hot water bottle in their belly. See, it just seems too easy for me. But you saw her. She, I mean, she wasn't faking. There was no reason for her to play that gimmick that she was ill. Yeah, but she was functioning. Only because of the type of job she had. Let's suppose she did something more physical. She wouldn't be able to show up. I don't want my host to sit in there with a hot water bottle all over her pooch. 866 <laughs> 277 it's the toll-free phone number. So that was one of the excuses. Also, allergies was on there, Ronnie. I can't, um, you know, allergies, again, I'm grossed out by it. Rory always had allergies, and I couldn't look at him. He, I find allergies filthy. He would puff up bright red, and the eyes would constantly be watering and itching. And then these people now, it's not like an occasional nose blow. They blow their nose around you constantly. And I can't be around that. Now, it seems like every other commercial is allergy medicine now. There's always all kinds of pills now for allergens. I always thought there were a lot of those, though. I always thought there was a, a lot of uh, allergy commercials. My brother had them bad. Uh, my brother-in-law gets terrible. He gets terrible. What's he allergic to, do you know? Uh, grass. Ugh. That's Cut, everywhere. Cutting grass. And spring is just unbearable for him. Now, he's a healthy guy. He's an athlete. But this one time a year, he's really, really sick. What are you going to do? The guy's sick. You're going to say, oh, come in anyway? What's so damn important about your job? you got to come in sick. What most, kind of job is that? Most people, according to these polls, are not using that as an excuse. They don't, they're not buying it. Yeah, but is that the uh, boss is saying that or other people? It just I mean, says America. I mean, it's like, it's like saying if you don't suffer from it, why would you care? It's like I don't suffer from diabetes, so when someone starts to tell me about the diabetes, I'm like, I don't know what to say back to you, brother. It means nothing to me. I've got nothing in my mind that I can have anything to do with this. I think for most people, they probably look at some of these things like a smoke break. 
You know, like, why do employees that smoke get to take so many extra breaks and leave the building and stand around outside? I don't think you do get that. See, that's another thing. Everybody's, you get a certain amount of breaks. Some people are smart enough to spend that on their hobby, smoking. But it's the non-smokers who aren't getting it. You think they're just taking their normal, regular break? Yeah, they're not taking extra time. You get breaks. It's like here. I go out and smoke during a commercial. It's a commercial. Well, those are our breaks. We have to break that. Right, but so do other people. If you have a decent union job. Also on the list, let's see here, hot flashes. Now, hot flashes, I don't even understand. Older women get them, right? Yeah. When you're going That's through the change, change, right? No, see, let me tell you something. I've heard about the change since I was a little kid. It always weirded me out. I still don't know exactly what happens, but I'm going to believe anything a woman tells me. If she says she's having a change, I'll go, why don't you stay home until you changed? I don't want you changing in front of me. To me, it comes across like a werewolf thing. Now, is it really where, the, the hot flash, is it really where you, uh, the woman actually gets hot? Yes. Is that how it works, physically hot? Your body is changing. I guess you are going through whatever it is from having, from being a woman who um, would be able to get pregnant to not. So things are closing down or shutting down. I don't understand exactly. The hormones all, are all changing. The up. hormones are changing terribly. So you will literally, you'll heat up or freeze out, and then their moods change. And to me, even when I was little and I'd hear the older ladies talking about it, it freaked me out. Now, I don't know this, and I'm just asking, is a hot flash also a moment of being horned up? That's also part of the change, but it doesn't mean that that's what the hot flash means. Oh, okay. So that's not like a wives' tale. No, it, it does, because... Your hormones are changing. So they could suddenly be horny. They could suddenly be cold. They could suddenly be sad or mad. That's just like another emotion that they're going through. Are you saying a woman who works for you for years as a secretary or assistant manager, she can't take a little time out because she's doing this? I say stay the F home during a hot flash. I don't know. I wonder how I don't want you they come. Here. Oh. No, not that. No, I mean the hot I, flashes. No, you met with the U.M. No, I did not mean the U.M. Because I saw you actually put the uh, little parentheses up. My fingers were down at my your side. Little, your little quotation marks. You said, I don't know how often they come. <laughs> so I don't know if you're getting hit with hot flashes, if they come on a regular basis. Oh. No. If, they, if you have them on a regular basis. Like yeah. contractions. No, no, no. You, you have no way. Of knowing how that's going to work. That's just like a nightmare that comes from out of nowhere on you. So stay home. What else you got? Uh, hangovers. Hangover, it depends. So on that, 92% said that is not a legitimate excuse to miss work. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, that's, you're supposed to drink on the weekends. And we had both Rory and Billy will take hangover days. Yeah. See, and I got nobody on that. That's self-inflicted. Yeah. Now, well, here's what you do. Obviously, you need to drink during the football game, but not during the second game. You drink hard during the first game, and you get to bed early that night. You go to bed 7, 8 o'clock at night. But you don't need to be drinking on a, on a Sunday late at night and then hung over the next day. And then during the week, you got a happy hour drink. For the Sunday night ESPN game. Have you guys started developing your uh, calling in sick? I'll, I'm not going to be able to make it in, Cameron, <coughs> for the 11 o'clock hour. No, we will never miss. That'll be the beauty of us. We will never miss a day. No, never even. We never miss. It doesn't happen. Just don't feel like it. No. Oh, no, we never miss. Why, you miss a lot of days? No. I, I had the feeling of doing one double shift day and hearing some of your excuses. You're gonna be a you're gonna be a shift missing bastard. You know, I, <laughs> I I'm actually kind of like you guys though. I did never. I just I, I feel bad. I feel like I'm letting people down, so I don't want to miss any type of. My work. thing with you uh, is even when you show up, you're letting us down. That's the odd thing. Wow. So, oh look, he gets the sad Mexican <laughs> smile. <laughs> it's the upside down Mexican <laughs> smile. Ah. <laughs> so all right, well, I, that just means I, I'm gonna always have to be here then. Yeah, but the beauty is, even if we don't come in, you have to come in anyway. That's so run true. The board. You seem really worn out though. Just after the first day, I'll have things. And you're also a little like uh, loopy, aren't you? No, actually, I'm okay. The uh, the donut. Oh, yeah, no shoes, donuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eat another one. 
No, I'm on a diet. All right, how, one more. You know, I <laughs> how are you on a diet? Night. I saw you eat Italian last night. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I try to work out every day, though. Uh, what's your workout like? I will, um, I will hop on the elliptical for ten minutes uh -huh. to get warmed up. I'll hit the weights depending on the body part, and then I'll run for ten uh, you, for ten minutes. You like to do the upper body? No, I'll work in the legs. Oh yeah. In fact, I wanted to last week when we were trying to find something for Fez to do to mm -hmm. occupy his time. I wanted to invite Fez to a workout. Now, I don't you go with him, Fez. Oh, I will never do that. You'll, you don't work out. I, I mean, no. after the dessert that I saw yesterday, <laughs> I, the workout is not walking back to the hotel. I know. Looking at me, it's hard to believe I don't work out. <laughs> Fez plans to work out when he's dead. <laughs> I'll have plenty of time then. Huh? No, I've never been comfortable in a gym. Why? I've had friends take me. One time, I got made fun of because I took too big of a towel with me. <laughs> I took a beach towel with me. Because they always say, bring a towel, you know, wipe down the equipment and stuff. I right, Fez, you were curious about menopause. I got this from Mike, Mike the teacher. Nice. During menopause, the ovaries gradually produce lower levels of estrogen and progesterone. After menopause, the estrogen levels in a woman are about one-tenth the level before menopause. And the progesterone levels are near and non-existent. So you're going through huge changes there. Yeah, it's uh, reverse puberty. And the woman can't take off a day for that? It's insane to worry about. America says no. 74%. All right, nine minutes uh, left in the third period, Fezzi. Spy report. Spy report. And you're still down 2 nothing. Not looking good for you and your ducks. Goodbye, ducks. Go buy a thousand bucks is what I'm saying to you. The ducks and my thousand bucks. All gone. You're losing bucks and ducks all night tonight. Uh, tomorrow, night, tomorrow night, uh, no, not from you. Tomorrow night is basketball? Yeah, tomorrow night is game four. Yeah. So, and that's going to be in Jersey, Nets versus the Spurs. Yeah, if Jersey loses in either the next two games, it's over for them. They've got to win both these next two games. So you gotta, you gotta win it the, uh, the home court. Yeah, you gotta go back three two and force uh, them to win. On, but I don't see it. I just didn't see the shooting on that team. I can't believe how bad they shot in that game. It's so stupid because to steal one on the road in San Antonio in game two, that's a nice position to be in. But then you got three straight at home. Yeah. And you want to take two of the three. So they're one down, they got to take the next two now. Now they get some pressure on them. But I'll tell you this, uh, the, uh, and that's Wednesday night. Thank you very much, John 22. Oh, okay. Wednesday night. Um, I, I wasn't impressed with uh, San Antonio either. They look lackluster. I thought they should have blown the uh, nets out of there. So without the Lakers, it looks so damn dull it does. in the finals. That's slow motion. Now, I didn't know this about the All-Star Game. Go ahead, tell me. The baseball All-Star Game this year. This this game decides home field advantage for the World Series. Yeah. They decided that, I guess, last year, right? That they were going to start and do that to make the All-Star Game a little more exciting for people. Yeah, because now, I guess it's on Fox or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're saying, finally, it means something. Right. Well, I mean, the All-Star Game, you got more and more guys... Not wanting to play, uh, you know, they sit out that game because you could get hurt, and you know it's not a money game. And then also these, the coaches will throw everybody in there and not care some years. So here's an opportunity, especially for the coaches to think, I've got to do this for my league. All right. So you think that's enough incentive to get players that would normally take off? To you know, show up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's enough, but it is. Uh, it does add that one extra little thing. It's got to make it a little more exciting. Actually, it's like gambling. You know, you need that one little thing to make a game interesting. We'll take a break. We're right back. It's the Ron and Fez Show.